My name is Chris Cushman and I'm an assistant product manager here at YSI. So this, vo this video will show you how to calibrate the YSI TrueLine Ammonia ISE. I describe how to set up the electrode in another video that can be found on our YouTube channel. So to calibrate the electrode, the first thing you will do is connect it to an instrument that can actually display ammonia concentration. So our TrueLab 1320 instrument and our Multilab 2 and 3 channel instruments uh, can measure ion concentration or effective ion concentration. Um, you can connect this electrode to any other meter that does feature BNC connection, so other manufacturers meters can also be used. Um, but the first thing you'll do is connect it to the instrument and then you'll want to go in and, and tell the instrument exactly what is connected to it. So as you can see here, um, I have an ISE and a pH electrode connected. So I will want to go in and set up this ISE to make sure that I am actually measuring ammonia and not calcium or any other ion, for example. So I'll go into ISE setup and I will choose the ion species that we are interested in. Um, so you can select from a lot of different ion species, um, but we will select ammonia. So NH3. So once that's set up, another thing that you can do is since the ammonia ISE does not have a temperature sensor built into it, you can actually use the temperature reading from another electrode that is connected to the meter and use that uh, and apply it to the ISE channel just to make sure that uh, your measurement is compensated for temperature. So with that I have this alternative temperature set to on so it will use that alternative temperature. So once you've done that, uh, don't be alarmed if you see any error warnings um, and that those will go away once you calibrate it. So now we'll want to go into the calibration mode. You will want to use standards that bracket your expected sample range. So I'm going to calibrate using 10 milligram per liter and 100 milligram per liter standards. Uh, so that would work really well if your expected measurement was about 50 milligram per liter. So the TrueLab can accept up to seven calibration points, but for this I'm just going to do two. So what we'll do is we will select our 10 milligram per liter standard. And you can see this is the temperature reading from the pH electrode that we have. So at this point we are ready to uh, start calibrating. And with that I'll show you how to prepare your samples uh, using ISA buffer. So now that we have our instrument set up and we have it set up that 10 milligrams per liter is the first standard that we're going to calibrate using, we will rinse our electrodes with some DI water and we will dry them. So keep in mind I'm using a pH electrode just because I want the temperature measurement from that pH electrode. So then we will place our 10 milligrams per liter standard on a stir plate and you'll always want to make sure that your samples are well mixed. So it's best to use a stir plate whether you're calibrating ammonia or nitrate or any other ISE. So you don't need to, cal or you don't need to have a uh, high RPM setting on your stir plate just because it's going to cause your ammonia to escape faster. So then what we will do is add our ISA. So whether you are calibrating uh, using your standards or you're measuring a sample, you want to add two milliliters of this blue ISA for every 100 milliliters of solution. So you really need to make sure that your standards and samples are prepared the same way. So what I'll do with this is add two mils and then I will wait one minute after adding it uh, to start my calibration and that'll just ensure that the sample um, and the blue ISA have, have mixed well together. Uh, after doing that I will start my calibration you don't want to wait too long after adding ISA to start your calibration because about five minutes or so after adding this blue ISA, ammonia in the solution will escape to the atmosphere. So there is a time limit when you do calibrate this. So with the sample stirring, I will add my blue ISA. That's one milliliter. And there's two. 
So we'll let that mix for a minute. So now that we have let that mix, what we'll do is place the electrodes in solution. You want to make sure that the junction of the pH electrode is all the way in solution, um, but you definitely don't want to hit the stir bar with uh, your electrodes. So just make sure that you have um, the right immersion depth with that. So then we'll let that uh, stabilize there, and then we can begin our calibration procedure by pressing Enter. So what the True Lab will do is it will wait until the reading is completely stable before telling you to move on to the next point. So what it'll do is it'll beep at us here in just a few, telling us that we are ready to move on. Our second point is 100 milligrams per liter. You want to make sure that you rinse your electrode off before placing it in the next solution. Then just like before, uh, we will place our next standard on the stir plate. So this standard is 100 milligrams per liter. We will put the electrodes in solution here. And then we'll add two milliliters of ISA. And we will wait for a minute. So now I can begin calibration by pressing Enter. And just like before, the instrument will check to make sure that the uh, measurement is stable before calibrating to that second point. So now that stability has been reached, we can end the calibration early by pressing the M key. We can continue on with calibration by going up to seven calibration points. But for this, we're going to end it after two. So when calibration is complete, a full calibration record will be shown. This calibration record will display the calibration points that you did. So in our case, we did 10 and 100 milligram per liter standards. And you can see the millivolt values that are associated with that. Um, also, the slope will be displayed. You'll really want to pay attention to what that slope is, because that will tell you what or how good that calibration was, basically. So if it's between negative 55 and negative 62, then you've got a, a really good calibration. So for ours at negative 58.7 millivolts per decade, that's what we want. If you have a slope between negative 52 and negative 55 millivolts per decade, that'll also work. Uh, however, if your slope is lower than negative 52, then you will want to perform routine maintenance, such as changing the membrane module. For any questions that you may have, please feel free to contact YSI Technical Support. You can also check out other videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Um, and with that, thank you for, for watching.